My name is Teresa DeVrack, um, and I work within College of Health Division of Nutrition, um, and I'm a registered dietitian. Um, I've, let's see, I am, um, I've done practical work um, in various areas, um, both clinical and private practice. Um, and my kind of my areas of, of expertise, I guess, or um, no worries, um, or of, of focus, I guess, is uh, both in um, weight management, also sports nutrition, um, and so kind of. A, bunch of different things, but then within private practice and, and outpatient nutrition, we kind of get a lot of different stuff um, and a lot of everything. So um, <clears throat> this is a topic, um, so today we're, we'll talk about um, staying healthy through the holidays and, and what that looks like and, and maybe coming up with some tactics um, to help us through the holidays as, as, you know, it's a great time when we can um, have, there's lots of, lots of great foods around, you know, that only, often are only around during the holidays. Um, and, you know, it's a fairly intense time period, right? And it really kind of, it kind of starts this weekend, kind of starts tomorrow, right? Um, or today, or even yesterday, we had kids coming through the hospital, different elementary schools and what have you, yesterday. So, um, so you know, it kind of depends. Um, kind of this time point, and then it's like mad rush into Thanksgiving, and then Christmas, and then it's New Year's, and well, if we take it all the way to like, you know, Easter. I, think, uh, I was gonna. I was gonna say Valentine's, St. Patrick's Day, Easter. You know, it just kind of downward spiral, right? Um, so, so yes. Yeah, so we'll talk about some different tactics. Um, I like to keep things fairly informal. Um, so if you have questions or if there's things that kind of you heard this topic and we're hoping we would talk about particular things, certainly bring them up. Um, and and my goal is for us to leave here um, or for you to leave here with maybe some new information or kind of a renewed sense of, okay, I can do this. Um, it's not quite so scary um, because sometimes coming into the holidays when, you know, okay, if we've been, especially if we've been trying to, to lose weight or to maintain weight, um, the holidays can be really challenging um, just with copious amounts of foods around and uh, they don't tend to be high in fruits and vegetables. They tend to be high in fat and added sugar, right? So certainly challenging things as well. Um, if we look at kind of national statistics, um, on a the average American um, or the average weight gain during the holidays, so this is, is a shortened period from basically Thanksgiving through New Year's, um, is about a pound point eight pounds uh, that we will gain during the holiday season. Um, certainly I've seen, you know, people gain more than that. Some people gain, you know, don't gain at all and, and what have you. So, um, so when we, when we think about eating during the holidays, there's some key things that we can kind of keep in mind as we're, you know, Ha going to different parties or um, just at work and there's lots of sweets around or you know treats or what have you um, and we can talk about some of those tactics but kind of to, to get going are, do you guys have any questions or things that you know kind of burning desires to, to talk about first before we kind of get into some of those and that's hard right because we, it is a stressful whoops I just lost Mike, um, it is it is a stressful time, right? Um, and and often we do tend to eat um, in re in response to emotions, right? Whether it's stress or um, anxiety or depression or anything of that nature, um, often we do tend to turn to food, and and you know somewhat because when we eat, it makes us feel good. Right? When we eat, we do, you know, we do physiologically get a release of serotonin, um, which is our feel-good neurotransmitter, right? It helps us to feel good. Um, the problem is, is that it's short-term, right? It doesn't last very long, um, and it doesn't solve the problem, right? It doesn't, it doesn't take care, it doesn't lower the stress. If anything, 
it maybe adds to our stress. Um, it doesn't take care of the anxiety or the boredom or the loneliness or whatever the feeling mm -hmm. is that I'm eating in response to. Um, and so even though we can have positive connections with food and, and eat mm -hmm. for positive reasons and enjoy, have those senses of enjoyment when we are eating, um, really kind of focusing, am I taking care of that problem? So looking at some key things for if I tend to be a stress eater, right? Um, of how can we manage stress through the holidays? Um, and that's, you know, as, as crazy as we might think, um, some people have, you know, started Christmas shopping already or, you know, gotten into that. And sometimes not letting things go until those last couple of weeks can be really helpful. So kind of planning it out, right? And if we can plan for those stressful times, that can really help to lower our stress when we get there. And so then we can actually enjoy the holidays. Um, and, and maybe it's a sense of refocusing. Um, what is it that you tend to stress about? Is it finances? So really setting together, putting together, sitting down, putting together a budget. Um, what is my budget and sticking to it? And making sure that we're, we're verbalizing that with others so that we're managing expectations, certainly as well. Whether it's kids, grandkids, spouses, friends, what have you. Um, if things are tight, that have that conversation, you know, or readjust. Okay, maybe in years past we've been able to spend this amount and that's just not going to be feasible this year. Um, and be realistic with that because, you know, when, when it comes down to it, you know, the, the, the spirit of the season is really kind of togetherness, right? And, and enjoying kind of the, the people around us and giving thanks for those things. Um, and so sometimes it's just taking that step back to refocus, what is it? Um, you know, what, what are some other stresses? Finances tend to be kind of a, a very common one. Are there other things that kind of increase stress during the holidays? Yeah. This might be an overshare, yeah. but um, my little brother killed himself about six months ago. So this is our first. Yeah. And that is causing me such anxiety mm -hmm. to, to try to deal with the first of something. Yeah. Yeah, certainly, and that is, yeah, and that's always, that's always the hardest, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, I, you know, and that's, and I think we can all sympathize with that in some, whether it was the loss of, of a loved one, of a parent, of a friend, um, of just, you know, being an empty nester even, you know, that the kids, this is the first, you know, that they're not home for the entire season in maybe just a few days or, you know, something of that sort. Um, you know, so finding, um, finding good ways to remember those individuals, right? So what, what did, and maybe it's, it's a focus on what did they really enjoy about the holiday season? You know, was Thanksgiving their favorite? Was it the cookie making? You know, and doing something in remembrance of them. Um, yeah, exactly. And that's, right. Right, and having that conversation, and you know, and it's okay to have that time of mourning, certainly as well, um, and to recognize. And and my guess is that everybody around you is probably feeling the same thing and is very aware of those underlying feelings. Um, and so, not to try not try not to worry about that, um, and worrying about you know expectations or what have you, because everybody understands which sometimes we try and hide and push some of that away. But I, I, I have faith that most people around you understand that, and it's just as hard for them as well, right? And so verbalizing that and, you know, and that's okay, right? Oh, excuse me, that's all right, no worries. So, so certainly, what else is, is stressful about the holidays? Well, you can find other coping mechanisms as well. Right. Some things are probably easier than others, but if you find other things to do, even going to places that you've been to with this individual, it might be too hard at this time, or just find things that you find in enjoyable, where you can think about him, or think about the stressors, right. and not turn to food. Right, right, yeah, definitely, very good. Um, and so if we think about kind of just general stress management, tactics without using food for coping with that stress. Um, you know, sometimes the simplicity of deep breathing, right? So sitting tall, closing your eyes, 10 deep breaths, um, doing things, um, 
relaxation things. So if that's for, you know, finding what relaxes you. So is it taking a bath, um, listening to music, um, reading a book, um, taking a walk, calling a friend, um, those different kinds of things that, that you find, okay, kind of, I can then approach it with kind of a clear mind again. Um, so those are helpful. Exercise is a, is a great way for us to manage our stress. Um, so even if it's just going outside and getting a f some fresh air, right? Sometimes that can just kind of clear our head, right? And especially with, I personally I find with the coolness, with the crisp air, it kind of, if things are kind of overwhelming, it's, it's, it's helpful, I think, to, to kind of get outside, breathe a little fresh air for a few minutes, um, and, and go from there. Maybe that's because I'm a Sagittarius and wind and fire fuels my fire. I don't know. But, um, but you know, finding, it's finding what works for you, right? Um, or uh, finding a time for meditation or prayer um, reflectiveness um, can be really helpful. Um, using gratitude as well, so um, a gratitude journal um, or sharing, th you know, a, the three good things um, is, is another common one. So the key with using gratitude, whether it's um, in a journal form or sharing it, um, is that we really need to have kind of an outward reflection of it for it to be most beneficial to help us to relieve our stress or to lower our overall stress level. So um, thinking of you know three things that you're grateful for um, and either the act of writing them down, so keeping that gratitude journal, um, or actually sharing them with somebody. Um, so somehow we get them out, right? Some, somehow we get them out of our head um, in, into a physical being. Um, and so that can be helpful. So, you know, it, the dinner table or, you know, when you're talking with a particular person, okay, you know, just to help kind of keep us grounded and focused. Um, three, th three good things either that happened today or three things that you're grateful for um, can really help us to kind of stay focused on what's important um, because often we get kind of, caught up in, in our shoulds, what I should do or shouldn't do or, or those kinds of things. So yeah. Um, I know from experience that um, my, my brother used to call from downstairs because he couldn't walk very well. And he would go, psst, psst, Wendy's. He wanted me to drive him to Wendy's, right? <laughs> and um, after he died, whenever I'd see Wendy's, I'd think of him, but I wouldn't think of the food right. that we'd share. So it's the event. That yeah, sure, it's sure. Yeah. Fact. Yeah, Being that's great. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so it, that kind of pulls us into you know some some tactics that we can utilize to for maintaining kind of health through the holidays um, because stress and mental health is probably first and foremost, right? Um, and if we don't have kind of our mental health, everything else kind of down the chain will start to crumble. Is it true that the immune system goes down? Oh, very much so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, when we're stressed, certainly we have um, we're greater likelihood of becoming sick and or taking longer to recover from an illness or an injury or something like that, certainly. Um, so yeah, so you know, getting your flu shot is great, but also so is managing our stress and our anxiety and, and those kinds of things. So, right, right? So. <laughs> so stress certainly is one of those things. Um, and sometimes going to events or having food around can be a stressful thing. Um, again, especially if we're trying to either lose weight or to manage weight. If, if you've been on a track of losing weight, um, I always recommend keep in mind that you know, the holidays are kind of a special time. And to be realistic with our weight management goals during the holidays. Um, very much, you know, I see a success through the holidays as maintaining weight rather than gaining weight during the holidays. Um, oftentimes having goals of continuing a weight loss of one to two pounds per week um, can often be unrealistic during the holidays. Um, and so really just taking, okay, for the next month my goal is to maintain weight, right? Um, and that as well can be really stress relieving um, because I'm not trying to do all of these other things um, and also continue on my weight loss journey. Um, so recognize that and that's perfectly okay. As a dietitian, that's what I recommend 
to all of my clients is working on just let's just maintain weight through the holidays um, and then we can kind of repick up come the first of the year and and yes. kind of start again I think it's hard be especially when you're going to these events with family members and they're like oh it's the holidays like it like, doesn't matter <laughs> like, right so if you try to like really restrict yourself you end up yeah. just doing like a holiday binge anyways and you're like right why did I eat all this candy right like, <laughs> right who overeats dinner with their family yeah, I'm sure. No, it. yeah, <laughs> definitely, so definitely. I like the attitude of like maintaining right. weight more than worrying about like losing. worrying about losing, losing. yeah, or keeping that like loss. Right, going. right. Um, and some good ways to think about maintaining is you know kind of get out of. Some of it is getting out of the mentality, well, it's Christmas, so it's the holidays. You can kind of free for all, is that we still need to keep in mind our health, right? And that when we, when we do um, eat high fat, high sugar diet, we are at greater risk for illness, for injury, um, for all sorts of things. So keeping that in mind, if we want to you know, minimize our risk of getting the flu and being sick during the holidays, we still need to make sure that we're eating our fruits and vegetables and our whole grains and, and exercising, right? Um, and so doing some things like, um, you know, I often say, you know, we, we are kind of bombarded by a lot of these different um, treats, right? Um, whatever it is, if you're a savory kind of person or a sweet kind of person or, or all of it, you know, um, is to find and, and enjoy the foods that you really do enjoy. So if we're in this kind of mindset of, well, it's the holidays, so, you know, I can go out and have a good time, um, then we tend to overeat and kind of overeat everything. Rather, I say, you know, the, where's this principle within intuitive eating? If you don't love it, don't eat it. If you love it, savor it. And this is something that I recommend employing all the time, uh, not just during the holidays. But think about during the holidays, what are your favorites, you know? And what are other just kind of fillers, right? Well, chocolate chip cookies, I can have those anytime. Right? And everybody makes those all the time. But maybe those sugar cookies or, I don't know, your, hi, how are you? Come on through. No, no worries. Um, um, you know, or, I don't know, grandma's fudge. Or, you know, those treats that only come out during the holidays that you really love. Focus on those. But take the time to savor them. Right? Um, during the holidays can really be helpful to maintain a sense of mindfulness. So when we are eating those high fat, high calorie, high sugar foods, of taking the time to really taste it and savor it. And you know, if there's memories associated with it, you know, allow for those memories to come in and enjoy that sense of, of what comes with the holidays. Um, and, and when we find, when we eat Food in general, it honestly doesn't ma remember, matter what we're eating. If we're eating it mindfully, we eat fewer total calories versus when we're just mindlessly eating it. So find those treats that you really like and enjoy them mindfully, right? And we're often satisfied with, with one or less than one versus, you know, the entire plate of sugar cookies, right? Um, and, and with that, it's okay to say no, no thank you. Right? Um, or if, you know, those holiday trays come around through the neighborhood or what have you, um, stick them in the freezer, right? Enjoy those holiday treats throughout the rest of the year because most of those will freeze very well and come out just as fresh and delicious um, later. Um, or also to say thank you and then, you know, send it to somebody else or um, even just if you really don't like it, if you don't enjoy it, Chuck it in the garbage, it's right? The it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's the thought, exactly. It's the thought that, that counts. Um, you know, and if you are trying to, you know, maintain health and we're going to parties, um, you know, and that's a hard thing in kind of any environment when we're going to, um, where we're not in control of the food, 
right? Yeah. Um, and we're not quite sure what's going to be there, if it's potluck style or a buffet or, you know, what have you. I mean, we're, we're, we kind of have these situations throughout the year. Um, and so employing some of the same tactics when we're in some of these eating environments. Um, and there's a lot of food, and there tends to be a lot of good food. Um, and, and you're not sure, is there going to be, you know, is there going to be a salad? You know, do people think about bringing something fresh during the holidays? Um, and, and I can tell it, you know, as, you know, Unfortunately, as the dietitian coming to the parties, everybody expects me to bring something, you know, fresh and <laughs> nutritious. Um, when, you know, I like artichoke dip just as well as somebody else does. But, you know, <laughs> um, you know, but at the same time, that if I bring something fresh, it's always gone, right? Because it's the only one there. So, and also you know that, okay, at least if I'm bringing something helpful, whether it's a veggie tray or, um, you know, a salad or a whole grain side or something like that, something that's not covered in cheese and cream, um, at least I can have something, you know, that kind of balances the rest of the items that I'm having. Um, a couple of other things with kind of those um, potlucks or buffet style eatings um, is to walk the line first. Because how often do we go and we start and we've got our plate and as we're going we just kind of fill it up and it ends up with kind of this mound, right? Um, and halfway we get down and we're like, oh, but I really wanted that, you know? And so like we make room for it or just pile it on top. Right? So, um, so I highly recommend kind of scoping it out first. Again, find what you really enjoy. Right? If there's a dish that you know, doesn't tend to show up more than just at the holidays and that's something you really enjoy, go for it. But then you know, maybe you skip a couple of the other things that you can have kind of any time. Right? Um, so think about you know, what you really enjoy. Um, there's been a lot of research looking at, you know, buffet-style eatings at, at restaurants. Um, and the individuals who eat less at a buffet are those who kind of scope out what's on the buffet and then make their choice. Considering to, you know, keep in mind kind of that my plate when we are making that plate, so remembering the vegetables um, of any kind, right? And that will also help us. Um, not going to the party hungry. Right? So often we tend to like, we'll skip lunch because I've got this great party coming at, you know, 7 o'clock or what have you. Um, and, and now bear in mind, you know, certainly to save some calories, a few calories would be fine. But when, when we come, when, what happens when we're over hungry and we are then around food? What do we tend to over? We tend to overeat, right? We're um, we tend to overeat and we, exactly, we, we make less kind of positive choices. Um, we're looking for those easy calories kind of thing. We're going for those carbohydrates. Well, that's kind of physiological, right? Because our blood sugar has tanked and we're wanting those quick things to, to bring it back up. Um, so having a snack beforehand, um, thinking about something um, like some kind of carbohydrate, whether it's fruit and adding some uh, peanut butter to it, so having some protein there as well. So kind of a combination snack, um, a handful of nuts and dried fruit or something like that, just kind of something to kind of curb your hunger so that you can kind of go in with, um, with making a smart choice, right? We, we notice that when we go out to eat. If we go out to eat and we're overly hungry, kind of everything looks good on the menu versus ideally we go out to eat um, and we can, you know, maybe a few things look good. We can make that choice. So that's really what we, how to empower yourself and to feel like you haven't lost your self-control is to not go hungry um, and not to go a long period of time without eating because then, then it's just kind of we're in it for kind of whatever's quick. Right. Um, so if we can, we can give ourselves that power by making sure that we're not going in overly hungry, or at really any time throughout the year, making sure that we're not overly hungry. Right. And eating frequently um, throughout, or regularly, more so regularly throughout the day. Um, some things, you know, some other kind of problem things during the holidays is um, our beverages because they tend to be very high calorie dense beverages, um, you know, whether it's um, like eggnog, right, that in eight ounces has, 
like close to 300 calories or depending on the kind that you get and those kinds of things. And then if you're, you know, adding a little brandy to that or, you know, if you're enjoying alcoholic beverages, those tend to have um, a lot of added flavorings to them and can really kind of bump up those calories. Um, so, you know, being mindful, it's not only the alcoholic beverages, but also our non-alcoholic beverages during the holidays tend to have a lot of calories and empty calories associated with them. Plus, they're really easy to drink down because they usually tend to be sweet um, and they go down really easily, right? Um, and so, so being mindful, what am I drinking? Making sure that we're staying hydrated. And okay, before I have a drink, I'm going to have a glass of water first. Um, or instead of um, because I want to, you know, enjoy the delicacies at, on the buffet or what have you, I'm just going to have um, bubbling water, spitzer water, or something like that, you know, or a lower, low calorie version uh, beverage. Because, well, I'd rather my calories come from those foods versus my beverage, right? So kind of making that, like, kind of making some of those choices. Um, or, you know, choosing a beverage that you know you'll sip versus kind of drink down quickly. Don't drink out of a straw, right? We drink out of a straw and we tend to suck it down pretty quick. Um, versus if we're not drinking through a straw, we tend to sip more slowly. Um, avoiding those refills kind of thing. You know, stick to the one glass of soda or something like that as you're having your other beverages. So some of, some of it certainly is making those choices, right? And we, have, we can make those choices, um, whether to eat it or not, because I enjoy it or I don't, um, and I'm going to savor it and I'm going to really enjoy it, um, or then I'd rather have this versus that. So um, those can be some, some nice things as we're, as we're kind of maneuvering some of those holiday eatings. Um, in those buffets or, or eating scenarios, choose it, using a smaller plate, like a salad plate versus a dinner plate can be helpful. Um, kind of putting a, a limit, um, I guess, on how many times you go through the buffet that, okay, I'm only going to go through once, and so I've got to make good choices, right? Um, and a choice that's going to satisfy me. And refocusing that those holiday parties are more so about the social interaction rather than the focus on just the food, right? Um, and so pulling some of that away. So if I'm having a tendency to go, you know, to the, the buffet, well, maybe go talk to somebody that's over, you know, standing someplace away from the buffet, and that's going to help kind of keep us away from the constant nibbling that we tend to do. Um, any other suggestions of things that have worked for you guys during those kind of eating scenarios during the holidays? Yeah. If I go back to the buffet line, it's only for vegetables. Oh, so if you go to your second time, it's only for fruits and vegetables. Perfect. I like that. Yeah, that's a good. Or you could do the, your first one. Your first time through is fruits and vegetables, and then your second time through is for the other things, which we find just in general. If we, um, if we start a meal with something like a salad um, or a broth-based soup, um, we eat t fewer total calories in that overall eating time period. So certainly, I think either way would be perfectly appropriate and a good way that we can still kind of feel that, that fullness and that satisfaction um, and not feel like we're depriving ourselves. Because certainly during the holidays is a time where we don't want to feel like we're depriving ourselves. Right? What else? What are some other tactics that you guys have employed um, that seem helpful? Anything? Yeah. Everything that from our neighbors, all the sweets and things like that. My husband and son. <laughs> I'm more than happy to eat them. And I wouldn't feel guilty you know, throwing them away. Right, yeah. Yeah, and so some of that's, you know, releasing that sense of guilt that we sometimes, that we some often have when we're given things. Um, and I would say it's okay. You know, I am not a proponent of food waste. And I think, you know, we have too much food waste and all of that. <sighs> It's okay, you know, realize that, you know, this only happens, you know, whatever time I do. I have a neighbor that we grew up with and they always made, you know, the, the fruit cake. And I personally don't like it. My dad loves it, great, he can enjoy it. No, thank you. You know, so if that, you know, kind of finding, it's again, what do you enjoy, what do you not? You know, um, and I certainly employ the freezer a lot. 
um, when it comes to those treats and just, okay, tick them, tuck them away. And then when you need to pull out something for a barbecue in like April or June, done, right? Somebody comes to town, you can pull out those treats at that time. Um, so I often, you know, will we'll reuse some of those things quite a bit. Um, another thing to keep in mind, um, I have on one of the handouts some, um, to make your recipes, your holiday recipes, a bit more helpful, um, or at least to decrease the calorie density of, um, of our foods, um, there are some things that you can keep in mind when you're making different foods. So a key one um, is for reducing fat. Um, when we're looking at things, uh, a lot of our baked goods, um, whether it's muffins or breads or brownies or something of that sort, um, replacing either some or all of the oil with something like an applesauce or a pumpkin puree or something of that sort um, that will still maintain the um, the softness and the, um, the moist uh, texture into your foods, um, that that's a good replacement that you can do. Um, even sometimes certain, certain products will do okay with decreasing the fat completely. Um, and you can kind of play around with some of those things with some of your recipes, kind of play around with it. Did this work? Did it not work? And kind of back and forth. Um, another one is if any recipe calls for heavy cream, there is <laughs> no need to use heavy cream. Um, and often you can reduce the, the fat significantly and maintain the flavor with just using a lower fat milk product. So um, even if you think whole milk, whole milk has about half the fat as heavy cream does. So that's a very good. And then if you wanted to take it even a little bit further, you could go to a 2% milk um, or even a 1% milk. Some recipes, um, you'll notice a flavor change if you eliminate the fat completely. Some recipes, you won't notice it. Other recipes, you may. Um, so you might kind of have to play around with that. But usually, you can replace any recipe that says calls for heavy cream with a low-fat milk. Um, and, and not lose the flavor, the creaminess, the texture of those products. Um, so if you're doing something like scalloped potatoes or, um, I don't know, what are some other creamy dishes that you guys make? Potatoes. Like soups? Like a potato soup or um, my mom always makes clam chowder at Christmas. Um, so exactly, using whole milk or a, like a 2% milk um, and you're going to reduce the fat significantly, right? Um, oh, oh, I think it does. <laughs> I, I, well, you know, and so some of that is just kind of, um, I think part of, of that as well comes with almost retraining our taste buds a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, sure, certainly, certainly you can add, change the flavor a little bit, certainly, yeah, definitely you can look at that. Um, and anything that you're pureeing a vegetable, um, if it's like a butternut squash soup, um, or the pumpkin, or excuse me, not pumpkin, um, potato soup or something like that, um, you don't need a lot of the milk component to add to it, um, and because that'll that'll increase. You can even, um, you know, look at you know. So if I don't use to put olive oil in it, you could substitute some of that fat with a little bit of olive oil if you're looking for kind of that creaminess, or you just drizzle it with a nice oil on top if you're wanting to add a little bit more richness to it. With, you know, thinking more of a of an unsaturated fat versus a saturated fat option. You know, you can look at some of those alterations, um, but in general, the cream can be easily substituted. Um, you know, when you're looking at cheese, often if we look at most recipes, um, they do far better um, or just as, as flavorful with a smaller amount of cheese, using only about half the amount of cheese than what the recipe calls for, and we still get that creaminess. Um, looking at the kind of cheese that we're using, so if a recipe calls for something like cheddar, cheddar is, is a very kind of mild in flavor um, and tends to, is very high in calories, high in fat, um, and replacing it with 
another kind of cheese, a lower fat cheese, and maybe just sprinkling it with Parmesan or um, Romano or something like that that's really got a big punch of flavor. Um, so you can look at, you know, kind of making some of those alterations to your recipes and kind of experimenting with some of those things. Um, Sugar-wise, if um, Splenda is a great substitute for sugar, um, flavor-wise may be a little bit different, but baking quality-wise usually comes out with the same um, end product. Um, you're gonna, it's gonna look the same. Um, texture will be very much the same as using Splenda. So you know some of these kinds of things, you know I put I put any of these substitutions, um, kind of when I talked about substitutions in general, you know like a low fat ice cream versus a full fat ice cream and what do you choose, right? Um, and I kind of have to you know you think about either way you have to think about portion size, right? Um, and so maybe using smaller dishes or something of that sort, um, and what's going to satisfy you? Right? If we're looking at that satisfaction aspect, um, you know, sometimes a low-fat or fat-free option just doesn't give us the satisfaction that we're looking for. And so then we tend to try and fill that satisfaction with a lot of other sources, whereas we may have been better off just eating the higher fat version and monitoring our portion size and eating less of it, but really enjoying the flavor and the, the eating it mindfully. Right? Um, so some of those kinds of things, okay, if you do stick with the, the, the high fat, the high sugar option, again, really making sure that we're monitoring portion size and eating mindfully when we are consuming those foods. Right? Um, so that can be helpful. M most beneficial during the holidays for staying healthy and maintaining our weight is exercise. Um, that's our number one defense through the holidays. Um, and feeling good, right? So managing our stress, managing our anxiety is staying active. So even if that's just walking, you know, making sure that we're, you know, keeping with our, you know, our 5,000 step goal or some whatever that is, um, that, okay, I, we continue on doing our, our 20 minute, 30 minute walk after dinner, something of that sort, right? Or at lunch, okay, well, there's always lots of treats around at lunchtime, so now maybe, usually that's not a problem because the break room isn't inundated with sweets and what have you, but maybe now I go and do a 10 minute walk to remove myself from that environment. So finding where, you know, where are some of those problematic places, um, even thinking about what we're doing with family and friends, um, and you know, going ice skating, going down Galvin Center and going ice skating or something of that sort where we're doing something active and doing it together and kind of building some of the, or continuing those traditions or making new traditions during the holidays. Um, things like, you know, maybe doing a, a 5K walk or something like that, like a turkey trot. Um, and in planning for some of those things that's going to kind of just keep us moving and keep us thinking about that. So not only is it going to help us, you know, to remove ourselves from the environment, but also managing our stress um, that also tends to kind of put these other things harder to, to maintain. Yeah. What other questions do you guys have um, or things that you were hoping I would talk about today that maybe we haven't talked or explored? Or other things that you find that are challenging or stressful during the holidays? Okay. I think for yeah. like me personally, I feel... I'm a teacher. I can wait for a long time. <laughs> I that the time crunch during the holidays yeah. is with constant things. And the lack of light, <laughs> which always feels, makes it feel that yeah, much. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Saturday night. I think I'm going to have to say, usually I work too much. This might be my only opportunity to see the sun during the day. I know. <laughs> Getting outside. Yeah. Sure. Because I find that, it's like once I get home from work, it's like, okay, we got to go to this thing. And right. All the events. And, make sure, and so a lot of times during the holidays, I just feel like it's like 
okay, I gotta just like stick a granola bar in my mouth. Yeah, like yeah. That. I don't really have that time to plan right. out my meals per se to do I like, know. healthy stuff, and so I found that that a challenge. And I also find a challenge with like the increase of price of like fresh produce. Mm -hmm. I know that many um, dietitian nutrition say that like. Having frozen vegetables or fruits yep. is fine, but then it's like, okay, I gotta thaw this out. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. So how do we how do we navigate that? Yes. Certainly, and time management is hard, you know. And so I, I think part of that back to the beginning when we talked about managing expectations mm -hmm. um, and saying no, that you know, if you just don't have time to make one more mm -hmm. thing this week, then just being okay with either getting something from the grocery store that's pre-made or saying, you know, I can't this time around or, you know, what have you. Um, and even sometimes thinking about kind of leading up to that, that if you know that there's certain events coming, is there something that I can make ahead of time and put in the freezer and then pull back out? You know, something like zucchini bread or something like that that you could make ahead of time, put it in the freezer and then pull it out and it's just as fresh as if you had made it that day, right? Um, so sometimes looking at, at those aspects. Um, well, certainly the frozen vegetables is a great scenario. Um, again, because they're, they're picked at the height of their season. So nutritionally, um, vitamin mineral content wise, they are just as high as if you're eating it, you know, peak season, September, August, what have you, um, or whenever it is uh, fresh and in season. Um, if you're doing something like a stir fry, you don't have to thaw those vegetables. And so that's just something to, to keep in mind that if you get those, like those bags of mixed vegetables, um, you can just pull them straight out and throw them in your saute pan. Um, and that water will evaporate as they thaw and cook. Um, and so your cooking time might increase by a few minutes, but it's not going to be drastic. You don't have to usually thaw them before using them. So keep that in mind. Um, or if you're doing something like a fruit smoothie, sometimes fruit is hard because it's, you know, it's not so much in season. Um, you know, we're going to start having citrus, which is always great, right? Citrus in the, the um, winter months, which is prime because that's going to help us fight our colds and, and what have you. Um, and so when we think about eating seasonally, Citrus is perfect during, uh, during our cold months. So the other things like our berries, um, that we can get frozen. Think about making smoothies um, or time management that, you know, okay, I need a snack before we're going to someplace, you know, blend up some and have it in the refrigerator and then you can kind of just shake it up and go. Um, or, or blend it ahead, of, you know, blend it right before you're eating it or something like that. So that's a kind of, that's a, another good way to utilize some of those things. Um, incorporating things like frozen, frozen spinach or um, other greens, like if you've grown kale and you're freezing it or something like that, you can put those in your smoothies and making a green smoothie, that can be really helpful. Um, so, you know, and that's, and that's hard, when, especially when we talk about like eating seasonally. Right? And we think about what's in season in the winter months. Um, and often we go straight to kind of potatoes, right? And we think about potatoes. When really all of our squashes are still very prime to be eating because we weren't picking those up until, you know, basically this week um, were we still picking squash. So those are still going to be good throughout um, throughout the holidays and in the beginning of the year. Uh, butternut squash is going to give us those same nutrients as all of our orange fruits will, you know, and those kinds of things. So your acorn squash, kind of playing with some of those different squashes um, is a great way to get a lot of nutrient density um, to our eating as well. Um, and then certainly looking at just making sure that we're at a salad. You know, sometimes when we think about vegetables or, or making sure that we're getting enough vegetables, the easiest thing that I often recommend is just make sure you have a salad with all your dinners, right? So at least, okay, at least if there's something, you know, things get thrown out, we can at least grab that bag of prepared lettuce out of the fridge and make a salad, right? And that's an easy way that we can always just kind of keep that those vegetables. Maybe it's not the same variety as what it was during uh, the summer months, but we're still getting it. Right? Yeah. Does that help? Yes. Yes. Okay. And I've heard that also, like, I know canned vegetables are 
that's great, but... Yeah, so if you're looking at canned, yeah, definitely. (laughs) Um, And I think they're always a good thing to kind of have in the pantry for when needed. Um, But when you do purchase them, make sure that you're purchasing low sodium or sodium free options um, because there is, there does tend to be a lot of salt in them. Um, So certainly that's something to keep in mind. Um, And again, those fruits and vegetables are being picked at their height of the season. So um, nutrient wise, they're, you know, not as high as our frozen vegetables, but they're still pretty good, right? Um, So I kind of look at those on a continuum, but certainly it's better than not having a vegetable, right? So um, just when you're purchasing them, make sure you choose the low sodium option. But yeah, those work just as fine. Yeah, and rinsing them, rinsing your vegetables or your beans can also help to get rid of additional salt um, by rinsing them. So don't just dump the can of green beans into the pot, um, but strain them and rinse them and then add fresh water to them when when you boil them. So that's a good way to, to remove even more salt, even if it's a low sodium option. Yeah, yeah, that's good.